Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil or victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and fight? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Into Calvary's light, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power. Precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Power, power, wonder working in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see all of you here today. We welcome those who are joining us online as well. And uh, hope that you'll get a blessing out of being a part of this service this morning. We have um, a number of prayer concerns. Um, but I wanted to remind you that at the end of the service today, we will have a called church conference. So um, please be aware of that. And... Um, we certainly want everyone here to have a part of that. I do have prayer concerns for um, family of Willie Holmes, was a um, cousin of ours that passed this week with COVID. Um, also, Kristen Britt is homesick. So we want to lift up Kristen and Dylan uh, as they're having to live at opposite ends of the houses right right now, and. Um, ask you also to remember the family of Jerry Parker. Uh, Jerry passed away Friday evening. Um, he, his heart gave out. So we just um, we want to keep his family lifted up. Uh, we will be planning probably starting tomorrow some uh, service for Jerry in the, in the future. So we'll let you know about that when we have the details. A lot of concerns, a lot of other names on our prayer list and um, a lot of needs right here in our community and certainly around the world. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this time. Heavenly Father, we're we're acutely aware of all the all the pain and all the hurting people in our world today. And we want to pause and ask you to be with each one to meet each need according to your will. Father, we also recognize that you're still God, and 
you're still in charge, that you love us so much. And you've provided a way for us to have salvation, to have abundant life. You've provided a way for us to know joy, to be able to share joy even in times of difficulty, even in times of sorrow. So we're asking you now as as our Heavenly Father to just help us put aside the negatives of this world. All of the all of the bad news that the media focuses on, that negative people focus on, and help us, Lord, to focus upon Jesus. Help us, Father, to be reminded of our calling as your people. Help us to be obedient. Lord, we know that you have a purpose for each of us being here today. We pray that we will leave this place today having recognized that purpose and having committed ourselves to fulfilling it. Father, for everything that we do and say, sing and think in this time together, we praise you and give you all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. He is jealous for me, loves like a hurricane, I am a tree, bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of his afflictions eclipsed by glory, then I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Grace in his eyes, if grace is a 
talked to Mr. Todd this week, tell him we miss him. I always forget to light those candles. Um, Mr. Todd has always taken care of that. I want to invite our children who would like to go out for Children's Church to be dismissed at this time. While they're being dismissed, I would invite you to turn in your Bibles to the first chapter of the book of James. James chapter 1. I'm going to look at verses 21 and 22, and I'll invite you to stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word. James 1, verses 21 and 22. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word may be seated. So why do we come to church? Well, we're thankful we can come to church, aren't we? But is the purpose for coming something that we do in order that we might worship in spirit and in truth? And sadly enough, a lot of Christians say they come to church just because it's something they were taught to do. Well, I was raised in church. I was carried to church as a child, and, and it's just something I've always done. It's a habit. It's a good habit. But if that's the only reason we come, aren't we missing something? So, do we come just because we were taught? Or do we come just to see our our friends and our relatives. I've heard people say, you know, that's the only time all week I get to see my cousins and my, and my, and my, my, my friends and my childhood friends. Other people say, well, it's a time of social gathering, a time to, to chat with friends about things, to sport our new clothes or new car, new hairdo or some other worldly possession. See, the problem is there's nothing biblical about these reasons for attending church. What's more, the reasons we attend church probably affect the things we do while we're at church. Let me ask you this question. How much time did you spend Preparing for the church service this morning. I'm not talking about getting dressed. I'm not talking about driving here. I'm talking about spiritual preparation. How much time did you invest spiritually preparing for this service today? Did you pray for the service? Did you pray for your pastor? Did you pray for any who may be lost in our service today? Any who may be watching who don't know Jesus? Did you pray for anyone hurting? I just saw where I, on our, on our uh, live feed, our live stream, um, a, a, a Christian brother in, in Myanmar asked us to pray for his country. And it's the second time that I've noticed that. I've noticed him being on there from time to time. But we're talking about somebody halfway around the world who is invested in our worship service who's asking for prayer. How many of us have prayed for that country, for that brother? What about your Sunday school class? Are you attending Sunday school? I know we're not meeting physically in person right now, but most of our classes are meeting online. The ones that aren't, people in those classes who really want to meet are meeting with other classes for the time being. If 
classes that are meeting online. We're having some good lessons. We're having some good, good Bible teaching. There's even some good interaction. What preparation did you take for Sunday school this week? Did you study your lesson? Did you, did you write down any notes, any, any questions you might have for your teacher? I'm not talking about last thing you do before bed on Saturday night, just kind of scanning over to see what the, what the scripture is going to be and, you know, maybe the outline. But, I mean, really preparing for Bible study. That's what Sunday school is, Bible study, studying the Word of God. I find it interesting that so many Christians, even church leaders, admit that their purpose for coming to church is something less than worshiping the Lord Jesus. One man used to tell me that for him, going to church was PR, PR work. He had a business. Gave him time to press the flesh. Line up more business before you're too hard on him. Do we truly come for the sole purpose of worshiping the Lord Jesus? In our text this morning, James instructs us as to three actions we can take to make church more worshipful, more, more purposeful. And so, the first thing I want you to notice is what we should do before the service. We see this in verse 21, in the very first part of the verse. James writes, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Lay aside. When we read those words, lay aside, the translation here comes from the Greek phrase. We also find it in the book of Hebrews when we are told by the writer there to, to put off every weight, lay aside every weight prior to running the race that's been set before us. Now, some people train for races by wearing weights. The idea is when the actual race begins, they take the weights off and they can actually run faster. But it wouldn't make any sense when the time for the actual race came if, if they did not take those weights off. They wouldn't enter the race while wearing the weights. The weights are for, for practice. But when the time comes for the real thing, they're to lay them aside. That's what James is saying. Just take them off. Take them off. The, the, the picture here is of us removing filthy clothes, dirty clothes, the, the ugly rags of impurity, of evil. And that prepares our heart to receive the word of God. The biblical writers actually borrowed this term, this metaphor, from a Greek phrase that instructs us to, to take off our dirty clothes. Now here we have a little irony when it comes to the local church. Have you ever attended a service where the invitation was the first thing given? Before the worship service began, the invitation is given. People are given the opportunity to get right with the Lord. I've attended one service like that. I've heard about others. But I wonder what would happen to our times of worship if we did actually offer the invitation at the beginning of the service. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that nothing different would happen if we did not respond to the Holy Spirit's leading 
for us to repent of our sins. Regardless of where in the service the invitation takes place, you and I, we have to submit our all to Him. I think that the reason so many Christians complain about how little they get out of the service is because they're not spiritually prepared for the service. And I've actually asked people that, you know, and sometimes even people who, who, who are contemplating leaving their church and, and, and coming to our church or something like that, I, you know, they say, well, I just don't get anything out. And, and what I ask is, what, what have you done prior to the service to prepare for the service? What are you contributing to the service? We must be spiritually prepared. And then during the service, we have to yield to the, to the moving of the Holy Spirit. So if we're not prepared, what's going to happen? Nothing? Nothing much? Or we may have an emotional moment or two during the service. We may be able to speak to some people we hadn't seen in a while. And if we haven't gotten right with the Lord, we leave with the same sin we brought with us to church. And someone has said, you know, um, I've heard many people say that the service, the worship, going to church, that's for people who, who have it all right, who have it together. And that's not true. The service, the, the worship, the church, it's where we come to make things right. It's where we come to lay it all at the feet of Jesus and let him get it together for us. Let him make it right. If we don't submit to His will, if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, then we leave in the same condition we brought her. We came. In fact, I heard um, one pastor said, we sing a hundred verses of just as I am. Lots of people come just as they are. And then they leave just as they were. Doesn't matter how many verses we sing of just as I am. Doesn't many how many times doesn't matter how many times we come to this altar. If we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, we're gonna leave just as we were. So it doesn't matter when the invitation's offered. We're not gonna get anything out of the worship service until we get rid of those filthy garments of our sin. It has bound us. It has nothing to do with how we dress physically in the, in the physical world when we come to church. But it's all about the sin in our lives. Sin that keeps us bound. Understand, I'm not pointing a finger at anyone. I'm not trying to judge anyone. We may not be bad people. But understand that the best you and I can give to the Lord, the best we have to offer, is still filthy rags when we stand before our sinless and blameless Savior. So what am I suggesting? It doesn't matter what sin is in your life. It doesn't matter if You've committed adultery or just have a, had a nasty thought. It doesn't matter if you committed grand theft or told a little fib, a little white lie. It's all still filth and evil. 
doesn't matter if it was murder or a harsh word spoken. It's still wrong. It's still sin. So what is the answer? The answer is take it off. Get rid of it. Get rid of those filthy rags. Repent. We had to narrow it down to one word. Repent. Ask God to forgive you and resolve to do it no more. That's what we need before the service. Every service. If we want to receive anything from the service. Otherwise, you might as well stay at home and slept in or watched something on television. So that's what we do before the service. We prepare spiritually. Secondly, what to do during the service. In verse 21, James continues, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Meekness. The first thing we need to notice is that word. Meekness. See, until we learn to listen to the Word of God, we won't get anything out of the Word of God. We have to listen to what God is saying to us when we come to His house to worship. What James is talking about here is the attitude of the one who is hearing. It means we listen as God speaks to us. Too often, I think we're guilty of doing all the talking. Whether it be during the service, whether it be in our prayer time, in our Bible study. You know, prayer is a dialogue with God. It's not, it's not us giving Him a laundry list of, of our wants and needs, of our complaints, even the needs of others. Those things are important to share with Him. But it's not just a one-way conversation. We have to listen to what he's saying. Sometimes we think we know all the answers. You ever had children? If you do, you know what I'm talking about. There's a certain age a child reaches when they know everything. Everything. But then they get to another age and they forget everything. You know, they, they, they're at that age, they know everything, you can't tell them a thing. Then they, they grow up, and suddenly they need you for everything. They don't know the answers. Sometimes I think we're like that. Oh, I know what the Bible says. Oh, I know what... What God, you know, I've been in church my whole life. I've, I've heard hundreds of preachers. I've heard thousands of sermons. I've read the book through. Genesis to Revelation. 35 times in my life. You know, we don't allow the Word and others God may use to influence us, to teach us. How are we going to grow any? How are we going to grow? It's okay for perfect people to not listen. The problem is I haven't met any perfect people down here, have you? I know it's Valentine's Day. And I know some of you guys are tempted to say, I have. I have met a perfect person. Really. Who's without sin? What about us imperfect people? I guess if we'd stop doing all the talking, 
and start listening to the voice of God when he speaks to us through his word. Listen with humility, with meekness, and a willingness to learn. And we could really grow in our faith. We could really get something out of church. You know, there are a few things, there are a few things more frustrating than trying to tell someone anything when they know it all. And it seems like when we're called out on that, we're, we're often too proud to even admit that we think we know it all, that we, that we maybe don't have all the answers. That can cause problems in a church. It can cause problems in a friendship, in a marriage, or in any relationship. We need to be humble James tells us, be humble, meek, in accepting the word of God. Say, so, well, I, you know, but I know it so well. I've studied it. I've been in class. I've been, been in church. I have never read a passage of scripture in the Bible that I did not gain some new insight. I don't think ever. When I've read it with an open heart and an open mind, and I've asked God to reveal it to me, I've never been disappointed. So it doesn't matter if you can quote it all. You still need to listen to it. Hear what God is saying through His Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit will teach us new truths about the Word. It will lead us to do new and exciting ministries. Consider the point of view of the one who's, who's taken so much time to, to prepare, to plan, to study. By the way, if you're a Sunday school teacher and, and you don't take time to prepare and plan and study, those in your class, they know it. I'm thankful I haven't run into that in any of our classes here. If we don't, if we don't take the time, if we don't study and do so with an open heart, we won't get anything new from it. So what's the desired outcome from all this preparation before the service? What's the desired outcome for this listening and hearing humbly, meekly, during the service. James tells us the word of God can save our souls. That's the reason we do what we do. If it's not our ultimate purpose in anything we do, we need to stop doing it. To see souls saved. We need to do those things which will affect salvation for many, for those who don't know Jesus. That's why he's put the church here. You know, the church, I'm convinced we have the math of the church wrong. I think too often the church focuses on addition. That is adding to the membership, adding to the budget, adding to the offering, adding to the classes, adding to the buildings. I think the math of Christianity and the math of the church should be multiplication. Each one reaching others for Christ. Making disciples. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Not just to baptize. The Bible never says make church members. The Bible says make disciples. Make disciples. Third thing this morning. 
what to do after the service. What to do after the service. Look at verse 22. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So what is James, you know, he went, on, went through all this about hearing the word, listening, humbly accepting it, and now he says don't just hear it. Do something. Live it out. So yeah, hearing it's important. But if your faith consists of nothing more than, than merely hearing the word of God and then doing nothing about it from Sunday to Sunday, I believe you need to be saved. That's not the kind of faith the Bible talks about. The kind of faith the Bible talks about is faith that is alive Sunday through Saturday every week. Don't just hear the word. Do the word. You can attend every revival in the county. You can attend every vacation Bible school and still be deceived. You can attend the best seminary, you can get a PhD in the Bible, and still be deceived. You can join every church, every civic group, every lodge, every support group that is possible, and still be deceived. See, the Word of God is dynamic, and it brings forth salvation. So it's imperative that we Do the word. I've heard it said that people need to be better students of the word. And I agree with that. You know, as Southern Baptists, we've always prided ourselves as being people of the book. It's one of our one of our catchphrases. We're people of the book. But I would add that knowledge alone is not enough. See, if we only know about the Bible we may perhaps become puffed up and proud. I can know how to fix a car. One that won't run. Know what it needs, how to fix it. It's not going to make the car go. I know it. Not enough just to know it. got to do something with that knowledge if I want the car to go. You may know how to fish or how to hunt. Maybe you read all the magazines. Maybe you check out all the books from the library, watch all the shows on sports TV. But until you get out of the house with a fishing rod or a rifle, that knowledge is not going to put food on the table. The same is true with God's Word. You can be a good person. You can know the Bible from cover to cover. But James tells us that faith without works is graveyard dead. It's that simple. It's not enough to study our lessons and come to church every Sunday. The real test of our faith I'm not saying that we're not supposed to do those things. That's part of the preparation before the service. That's part of what we're doing during the service. The real test of our faith takes place from the time we walk out those doors to we come back the following Sunday. That's where our faith is put to the test. That's where we choose to be obedient Or disobedient. James tells us faith without works dead. Have you thought about just reflected even on on your this past week? From the time you left here last Sunday till you return back today, what did God say from last Sunday that you put into practice this past week? 
How did it impact you? If we come prepared, and if we have humble hearts, receptive hearts, there's going to be something that God's going to say to us, not because of me, not because of your Sunday school teacher, but because of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. There's going to be something that each of us takes out of here every time we leave, and it's going to affect us throughout the week. It's going to make a difference in the world throughout the week. We have faith. Our deeds will show it. Our lives will be above reproach in public and in private. We'll bear good fruit. People will be able to tell that we are Christians by the fruit we bear. Finally, I'm going to share with you some Old Testament scripture. In Exodus chapter 24, Moses presented God's covenant to the children of Israel. When he finished sharing with them, they said, everything the Lord has said, we will do. And they later added, we will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. And we know that they failed miserably many times throughout their history. But at that moment, they were repentant with the intent of serving God. And it's only when we have that attitude that we can move forward doing what He calls us to do. That's what it all boils down to. It's not whether you're here every time the doors are open. That's a good thing. But what's more important is who you are and what you do before you come. While you're here and then after you leave service. Heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. What do you do during church? What's your preparation like? Do you listen with an obedient, receptive heart during the service? Do you leave the service to obediently follow the urging of the Holy Spirit? He speaks to you during the service. Through his word. Heavenly Father. As you continue to speak to us. To convict us. To encourage us. Help us to be obedient. And we leave this place. And right now. Lord if there's one who, who needs to, to make a decision for you. In any way. Help them, Lord, have the courage to step out. If there's one, Lord, who needs to, to come and kneel and pray, place that burden upon their hearts. We love you, Lord. We give you the praise for all that we do, for all that's done in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Whatever your need this morning, salvation, rededication, church membership, you just need someone to pray with you or you need to kneel at this altar and pray. You come during this time of invitation.
with me and never leave ever close God abide with me there in the night Gethsemane before the cross before the night overwhelmed Abide with me, abide with me, don't let me fall, and don't let go, walk with me, and never leave, ever close, God abide with me. morning before we go, invite Nancy. She has something to share with us. Thank you. Good morning. As you recall last Sunday, we had a wonderful service in which we all were able to um, have a sermon from a missionary, and we understood just how important their work is and how important all the work that folks do. There's one lady who very quietly takes care of that here for us and also for the association. Carmen Hattiger, our WMU director, and the PD Association WMU director, please join me in thanking Carmen for all she does. <laughs> We are thankful for Carmen, her family are, are just servants at heart. Now, I told you we, we have planned a uh, time of business this morning. It's been, um, the information has been put out there, but we're going to have to have a formal motion. So this time we'll consider ourselves in conference for the purpose of the um, stated purpose of the call business meeting. I'm going to recognize Pastor Jason, who's going to come on behalf of building the grounds and preschool committees to make a motion. All right, I was asked for, from the preschool and building the grounds committees to present this motion for a church. Uh, the motion is to, uh, to start, uh, create a kindergarten program for our preschool, and in doing so and being compliant with all the regulations that the state and city puts on us for our building codes, uh, we do need to make some renovations to the preschool area, uh, two rooms in particular that need uh, some work done on them. Uh, the amount of cost that we need to budget for this is $15,000 uh, to be able to complete uh, just to have the building uh, to be compliant to go forward this program. Uh, so saying that, that is just for the building part of this uh, to get it going, we still will have to furnish the room and do all those things to it. But for this uh, purpose, what we're presenting to you now is to begin the program, be compliant with all that, to allow a $15,000 budget 
to do the renovation work. Okay. The motion comes from committees. It does not require a second. Actually, two committees. It does not require a second. Now, before we vote, I want you to understand entirely the, um, the motion before you. I understand the motion before us is to approve the beginning of a kindergarten through Robdale Baptist Preschool and as a church to uh, make the needed renovations to the preschool building um, at a budget of $15,000. Now, do you have any questions? Anyone like to speak to or against the motion? Hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor, please let it be known by saying amen. All those opposed, please say your piece. Okay, then it's unanimous. Um, Pastor Jason, is gonna, we'll consider ourselves out of conference. Pastor Jason is going to lead us in our announcements and closing prayer. A work will begin this afternoon. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, really, there there is a lot of work to be done to get this accomplished, and there's been a lot of you already have uh, given us a, a lot, helped us with information, um, looked up things. Um, some of you have, you know, really putting in some things already for this to, to get started. So we thank you for that. And thank uh, Miss Linda. Uh, you know. It's 20 some years in this ministry and she's still going strong and we want her to continue in that so that is a prayer and a praise we thank you uh, for that it's a great legacy and randy for all her hard work and uh, continuing this legacy this ministry that we have going on here and i encourage you if you don't if you like what in the world do we do here at preschool come by one day wear a mask we'll walk you through real quick and it won't take you long to understand what we do back there and uh we just we thank the Lord for this opportunity to serve. Uh, a few announcements to go over with you. I uh, do want to uh, bring up an opportunity for you to serve, and you can actually do this from your own home. Uh, this is uh, coming from our association, uh, North Carolina uh, Baptist BAM. It's the Baptist Aging Ministry from uh, our convention. Is uh, they have a a. Uh, I want to make sure I don't say hotline because you might get the wrong word, especially today. This is a hope line. There's a lot of our senior adults that need an encouraging word. They need somebody to talk to and just get it out. So the, uh, this, the North Carolina Baptist Aging Ministry has uh, created a hope line, and it's a number that any, uh, our senior adults can call and uh, talk things out, get help, get good encouragement. Uh, but our association is providing a training for this. Now, there's no obligations in the training, uh, but February 25th, that's a Thursday from 10 to 12 at the Petey Bout Association office, uh, they will have a training for you on this. Uh, the group is limited to nine people, uh, but it's a, just a great way uh, if, for you to be able to, even from your own home, to be able to use your cell phone or your phone that God has provided you uh, to reach out to these that need to talk to someone and that, that can't do it right now. Uh, your numbers are confidential. It goes through a service where, you know, you, you don't have to worry about your info getting out there. Uh, it's all great. And if you go to the training, again, there's, um, it says that there's no obligation. Just uh, come, listen, learn, and then decide. So uh, any other information, Janie Fry will be glad to answer that for you. And, uh, again, that's February 25th, 10 to 2. Uh, a few other announcements, I uh, just want to remind you, uh, ladies that have been meeting on uh, Thursday nights at 7, uh, you have uh, a Bible study coming up uh, this Thursday about Mary Magdalene, so that's encouraging. But then, not to be confused with that, the, young, the Baptist young women uh, will meet this Monday at 7 o'clock uh, via Zoom, so if you're a part of the young women's uh, group, uh, please uh, uh, you know, get on there at 7, and they'll start meeting back on there. All right, are there any other announcements that we need to mention today? All right. Oh, yes, Saturday and Sunday we have different showers. Um, 
Bob Nelson's niece is going to be, they're having a baby shower uh, for them, and then we're having a wedding shower uh, for William, and that will be Sunday after church, and be able to come be a part of that, and they are registered at Amazon, and you'll be able to uh, go in there and pick some things out, and just appreciate that we're able, still able to do these things. It's kind of weird. We do drive-throughs and drive-bys and all that stuff, but we're still able to, uh, to, to mingle and have a little uh, uh, encouragement to one another. So just uh, take part in these things. Keep an eye on your calendars as these events come up. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you do for us. Lord, we are, we are thankful that you have given us a place of worship, Lord. And Lord, as we're encouraged today, Lord, to... Uh, Lord, not only just come and be here, whether we're here in person or we're here virtually, but Lord, that we prepare before we come, Lord, that we pay attention and we listen and allow you to make the changes in our life as we're here, and Lord, to continue to live that out and do those things as we leave, Lord. Lord, I pray you just uh, help us to, to recognize uh, the forgiveness that you've given us, Lord, the love that you pour on us and the grace and mercy that you so graciously bestow, Lord. And we just pray that we go out living a great example for you. Lord, these that uh, we uh, have in our prayer list, Lord, that just need a touch from you, Lord, the families that have lost loved ones, Lord, the families that uh, just uh, having a hard time, whether it's through sickness, whether it's through um, problems with uh, being uh, confined, Lord. Lord, uh, maybe we have... Uh, those that have issues with work or with school, we, we just pray you just lift these up, God. There's just so many things going on, but we know that you're still in control, so help us to recognize that in our life. Lord, be with us, guide us, and direct us as we go, and we ask this in your name. Amen.